Hi, this is Dr. Nick. I'm the incrementalist here with Incremental Insights for Better Business, Better Health. And I'm Fred Goldstein with Accountable Health, working with Nick and others to help employers work with their employees and improve their overall health. So, Fred, um, numbers continue to climb. Um, we, we see this sort of uh, expansion of uh, people getting COVID, people getting admitted to hospital with COVID, overwhelming, you know, different health systems. Um, but it's varied throughout the country. What's going on and what can we do about it? Yeah, it's really fascinating, Nick, and, and not in a good way. Obviously, we're seeing now some post-holiday increase, et cetera. And, and some people are actually saying we haven't seen some of that yet, which is even more frightful, given that I think this month we have over 3 million new cases so far in January. We're clearing 200,000 a day for almost every day this month. And it's really gotten to this point where it's almost over the top out of control. But again, at the same time, we know, and you've mentioned this, you've mentioned it repeatedly, this idea of double down on those safety measures, double down on those risk mitigation strategies. And that's really what we need to begin to consider is how do we make ourselves even safer? We know this thing is aerosolized. We've got a new variant that is more contagious. And so that requires you to think, should I potentially instead of wearing just a gaiter, make sure you double it up for one thing. The CDC recommends you double up that so you have at least two layers. But we're starting to see people begin to wear even two masks. Obviously, as, as you know, as a physician, and I haven't had the experience of wearing an N95, I think you've talked about it, it's very tough to wear. It has to fit very well and you really need to get it fitted. But you're starting to see people begin to wear two masks, perhaps a, a, a cloth type surgical mask or a surgical mask with a cloth mask over it, as well as obviously washing your hands. And for those of us who can limit our activities indoors, we should clearly do that. I'm seeing restaurants full. I'm seeing restaurants with people without masks. And those are places I've decided I just can't go to those anymore. And I've really cut it back. But for those who can't, really pick your places, watch your indoor activities, and make sure you're always masking up. It's really difficult now, I understand that, but it's really, as you said, we need to double down on this. Yeah, so I, as, as I think about this, I know that everybody is fed up. I, I am, I wanna go out for something to eat. I want to, uh, you know, shed the mask. We were talking about this from an exercise standpoint and you know, I, I've advocated this for, for uh, wearing of a mask whilst you're exercising um, and, you know, treating it as a positive. You know, I, I keep thinking the day when I get to take that mask off, imagine how great it's going to feel. I'm going to feel like I'm not sucking air anymore when I'm really exercising a lot. So, um, but, you know, you, you, you bring up a couple of really important points and we've seen other people do this. So if you can wear two, could be two cloth masks, you know, we're giving additional uh, sort of protection. The other thing I would say is that you look at each of these instances and from a business standpoint, what should you be thinking about? Well, how can I limit or reduce the requirement for people to come inside? Can I mitigate that? So, you know, when you're talking about workers, let them work from home, find ways to actually push them out so that they don't have to make those um, journeys in. I recognize that for some people that's not possible, but for those that is, facilitate that as much as possible. And then for those that are in, you've got to be thinking about this and thinking about mandating mask uh, wearing, you know, potentially doubling up, especially if somebody is in a, um, a circumstance where they're being continually exposed to people, you really want to protect them. And the way to do that is to give them. And if that's hard to do, give them breaks. Have a, we have breaks when we're wearing our PPE, although you know, quite often people work through because it's such a pain in the neck to take all of this stuff off, to doff, don and doff this stuff. So you know, we tend not to. Um, you know, and I even noticed I wore my N95 in a specific circumstance last week, um, and I was offered a drink. And then I realized, well, actually, I need a straw because I'm not taking this thing off because <laughs> that would be dumb. <laughs> so, right. Well, right. you've got to think through all of these things. Um, you know, this is doubling down, accepting that the vaccines are going to make a difference. We've seen it in Israel. They're already seeing some of that herd uh, immunity effect that I think is positive because they've done a really good job of rolling it out. We've got to get this rolled out. We've got to get over the vaccine resistance and, of, of folks and understand that these are safe vaccines. 
But the faster we get them out to as many people as possible and stop focusing on inequity and, you know, yes, we want to get all of this out to as many people as possible. And, you know, I'm not advocating, you know, people jumping the line, but that's really not the focus. We've got to be pragmatic about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know one of the things we've talked about, and you're obviously an expert in this, is this whole idea of technology and how to leverage technology in healthcare. And there's some exciting stuff I think we're beginning to see around this. And I know you've been looking at this quite deeply, Nick. So what are you finding? Yeah, I think it was a little bit of a surprise to me. I didn't fully expect that, you know, a wearable device, it was one of the wearables, doesn't matter which one that was monitoring uh, essentially heart rate, and I think also may have included pulse oximetry. But here's the critical thing. Yes, we know that, you know, if you have an elevated heart rate and it stays like that at rest, um, you know, elevated temperature and your pulse ox is dropping, you know, that can give you signs. But they did some clever statistical analysis and looked at the data pre um, people developing COVID. So this was a, a prospective study. It wasn't a large cohort. I think it was about 200 people. But they were able to find signals in that data of those individuals that was indicative of them having COVID before they were tested for it. So this gives us some potential for monitoring that allows us to say, we could actually issue this in cases of high risk. And where we haven't got testing or somebody hasn't been tested, we might actually get alerts from this to say, hey, you need to go get tested so that we can focus the testing uh, capability because we still haven't sorted that out frustratingly but you know hopefully we will um, but in the meantime let's get the people out of commission and put on um, a, an isolation or quarantine pathway depending on where they fall in all of this before they spread it especially with this higher uh, transmissibility that we're seeing with all of these variants so more study required this is not go out and buy you know devices and say um, but certainly, I think good news because we're going to see more of this, I think, emerge. Yeah, that would be fantastic if we could begin to identify those individuals early, particularly those who may not be feeling the symptoms themselves, but have some underlying changes that are picked up by this technology. So we can get, <laughs> sort of close down that spread we're seeing from the asymptomatic folks as well as the others. So that's great news. And obviously, we'll continue to monitor that and watch that over time. So once again, a fantastic week. Thank you so much, Nick. This is Fred Goldstein with Accountable Health saying thanks for joining us. And please do check out our website if you'd like more information. We're happy to talk to you or get on a call and discuss some of the services we offer. And if you'd like to learn more about this, you can always check out our uh, weekly webinar uh, Wednesdays. Um, uh, the link is down here. You can register. It's a Q&A session. It's short, brief, uh, ample opportunity to ask questions. So join us if you can. And I'm Dr. Nick. I'm the incrementalist here with Incremental Insights for better business and better health.